Well, the trees are looking particularly bare and the ground is covered in leaves because we are just moving into winter. We are over on the awesome Elson's Lake on the Stanick Lakes complex and it is a water that I've flitted with quite a lot in the past. I say flitted, I've fished it sort of two or three times each year and I've never got amongst any of its 18. So my plan this year was to have a very short autumnal campaign just moving into the winter to try and outwit one of those old residents. Now, like I said, I have flitted with it in the past. Last November time, I actually came over here and managed to catch a lovely dark common. It was a beautiful old carp and really, really wet my appetite to catch some more. So I hatched a plan. I purchased a winter ticket from old Phil and the plan was to return this year to catch one of the big girls. So with the winter ticket secured, which actually allowed me to fish any of the lakes on the complex, except Roman of course, I was itching to get down here and having caught one that previous autumn, I had built up a bit of a plan. I was just hoping that it'd be the same thing that would happen this year. Now, there's a little swim here, Brad and I call it the little hidey hole, and the fish do frequent this area at this time of year. They don't necessarily hold up here, but they definitely move in and out of here throughout the day and night. There isn't a bite time as such, they could be in here in the middle of the night or in the middle of the day. So my plan was to keep bait trickling in this area. It's so quiet, it's such a tiny little spot that I knew no one else would be bothering it, mainly because it's a one rod area and who likes to sit on one rod all night? Me, if the fish get in there. So that was the plan, I decided to come down just after the gates, sorry, just before the gates were being locked to keep that bait trickling in. In the darkness, I'd quite often ring Phil and say, what time are you locking up? He'd say, six, make sure you come before. And quite often I would get here at like 20 to six. Walk down this track nice and quietly, only to introduce some bait into the area. And after a couple of weeks or so, I've seen a few fish visit in the area, I decided it was time to fish. So I arrived for my first session on a particularly warm day actually. I got all the gear ready, barrowed round to the swim, and lo and behold there was no one in it. I don't really think this swim gets fished that much to be honest. It's only one rod like I say, it's really tight. Sure people might do a bit of stalking in here but I definitely don't think they concentrate on this area. Not many people do when it's just one rod. So I put a handful of bait in there a bit of crumb, a few casters, a few maggots, I think there was a bit of corn in there as well and just left it for I don't know 15 20 minutes or so whilst I got a few bits ready sharpened some hooks up that kind of thing. Anyway went back to the spot had a look it had all gone. I didn't put loads out there but I couldn't believe it had gone so quickly to be honest. So it was a bit panicky at this moment. I thought, blimey, there's a few fish visiting the area, clearly. Went back to the bait bucket, made another little ball of bait up. And the beauty of using that crumb is you can squash it together and create like a little ball so you aren't spreading bait all over the swim. You literally drop it on the spot, it breaks down. And uh, yeah, there's no sort of loose feed all over the swim. Anyway, just as I was about to introduce that ball of bait, I'd waited sort of 30 seconds or so as soon as that ball left my hand, a fish came in and it was like, uh, oh no. Anyway, I turned around in disgust at my poor angling that a, a ground bait ball no doubt landed on one of the carp's head. I quickly sort of <laughs> ran back up the bank, trying to be as stealthy as, stealthy as I could. Um, and nothing actually happened the rest of that day. Nothing came back for that bait. I did put a rig back on the spot and I was just keeping my fingers crossed that maybe they would return at night time. Got to bed at, I don't know, 11 o'clock, something like that, and at 2 a.m. the rod absolutely melted round and on a tight clutch, unfortunately, the fish managed to get into the snags to the right. 
just bumped off, reeled in, um, hooking everything was fine, but the fish had come off, which is very, very annoying. So back to the drawing board, went back to the bivvy, sharpened up another hook and got it back out onto the spot. Now what was interesting is that um, through sort of the beam in the torch, I could see the, the spot sort of clear as anything and it was absolutely glowing, which was kind of nice because it meant that on future visits, I could even turn up in the dark and lower the rig onto the spot. You know, if I was finishing work late or whatever, I could get back to the lake and fish the spot effectively at night because I was seeing exactly what I was doing. Anyway, I placed that rig back on the spot and just before first light, ramped off yet again. And this time the fish decided to power off straight, straight into the open water, which is exactly what I wanted. And just like a dog on the lead, I was able to lead her to the landing net and I safely slipped a fish of about mid 20s, upper 20s into the net. It's a lovely, long, lean fighting machine and a very nice start to the autumnal campaign. So absolutely brimming with confidence, having caught one off the spot on the first night's fishing, I'd made plans to return the following week. And I did manage to get down to the spot twice more before I was fishing next, just for that little late night bait up. Did it in the dark so no one could see and then I'd planned to fish on the Thursday. Now, now on the Thursday, I had a game of golf planned way down south, so I did have to get back in the dark. Now, like I said before, the beauty of the spot is, as soon as you put a torch on, on the head torch, it absolutely glows. So I was able to get back just before dark, just before they closed the gates and barrow around to the swim. Now, it was a chilly night and to be honest, I wasn't overly confident. So I flicked the beam of the head torch on, lowered the rig in place, a couple of handfuls of bait, just like I did the week before. And I woke in the morning to motionless indicators, unfortunately. Nothing had happened, it had been a really cold night. So I decided just to creep up to the spot, just like I am now, and peer down just to see if the bait was still there. And it had gone. There was absolutely nothing left on the spot. So I'd either been done, and fish had moved in and I hadn't had anything, or a load of roach had moved into the spot and absolutely cleared me out. And I was intrigued to see, to be honest, so with nothing in the area, I decided to reel the rod in, just lift it up, check the rig, check the hook point, which was absolutely pin sharp still, and I lowered it back onto the spot, followed it with another ball of bait. Except this time, I sat there for, I don't know, 35, 40 minutes or so, just watching that bait, and a shoal of roach did move back into the spot. They weren't absolutely battering it, and I had put a few sort of lumpier bits of bait out there, a few boily halves, that sort of stuff, that the roach were gonna find a lot harder to eat. After that, I sat back on the bed chair, contemplating what to do, thinking it's probably time to go. I was actually on the phone to Brad at the time, and I said to him, I thought that nothing was gonna happen, I was probably gonna go elsewhere, might have a little go on zigs or something like that. Anyway, just before I went, decided to have one more look. The roach were still there, absolutely devouring the spot. They were like dancing on their heads, turning on the spots, flanking, that sort of stuff. And I must have been watching them for about five minutes or so when I saw what looked like a black shape just cruising from the back. All of a sudden, all the roach absolutely fled and the rod absolutely burst into life. And straight away, I picked up the rod, the fish was powering under the snags. And to be honest, in the back of my mind, I was thinking that a pike had moved in onto the spot because the roach literally fled the area immediately and I had a take. Anyway, must have been five minutes or so, I was trying to get this fish out from underneath the snags and eventually he just sort of came out. And just in front of me, I saw a really big common flashing in the spot, flashing in the clear water. Couldn't quite tell exactly what it was, but as it wallowed just in the depth, I slipped her into the net and in the net was the oldest carp in the pond, probably the most sought after as well. It was a fish known as Scar and she weighed just under 38 pounds. Old Brad has came down, did some beautiful footage and it's probably one of the oldest carp we've ever caught and one of the most impressive in the lake. Just had an almighty take on that, that little single rod. Had an incredible battle out here trying to get it stop it from getting in them snags and I have got a giant in the net. Oh, 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 oh real big one. Yes!
Well, <laughs> one of the lake's A-team. A magnificent old creature called the Scar Common. What a fish that is. Mega. Oldest one in the lake, that one. Well, definitely one of them anyway. Go on then, girl. <laughs> so that was one of the A-team has ticked off my list and I'm hoping that maybe I can catch a few more in the next few weeks. If not, I'm pretty satisfied.